Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley here for EllenHudson.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today I have a very fun Halloween themed video and I am sharing five stamping techniques that I think you should try today. <laughs> And for these cards today, you get a little peek there. I am going to use this color palette that was inspired by a post on Instagram that Starbucks made because Starbucks often inspires me <laughs> by giving me lots of energy. But I thought this post was absolutely beautiful and it's so much more vibrant in real life, the colors. So if you want to check this out on Instagram, you can go over there and check Starbucks out. But I've picked some colors here. This is actually sand dunes from all to new, but it is stamped off once. And you're going to see the rest of these colors in action throughout the video. Now, because this is a Halloween themed video, I am going to start with the Dynamite Halloween stamp set. This is from Brandy Kincaid. It was released last year. And the first technique I'm sharing is pattern stamping or creating pattern paper with a small stamp. Now I have this single pumpkin stamp. This is from the Dynamite Halloween stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen line. And I'm stamping it onto some Nina Solar White cardstock using the Catherine Pooler Blackjack ink. This is not quite black ink and it's very, very beautiful. I love it for Halloween and for Christmas as well. Now you're gonna notice that as I'm stamping my pattern, I am rotating my stamp block so that I get different angles of this pumpkin. This is probably the easiest way to stamp a pattern rather than trying to keep everything in a solid line. This is very forgiving, but you could definitely, you know, kind of create lines of stamping across your cardstock. Now, one thing you should keep in mind when you are creating a pattern with your stamps or stamping a pattern is that you want to make sure that your pattern is stamped off the edge a bit. So I don't necessarily want all of my images to be contained within the four walls, let's say, of this cardstock. I want it to kind of bleed off the edge. And so I have a piece of scrap paper underneath. Now keep in mind, you can do the same thing with multiple images on one acrylic block. So if you wanted to put three or four images on one acrylic block and stamp with them over and over, you can do that. And this is a look at the finished pattern that I created. You'll notice that I didn't go all the way to the top and I did that on purpose. Now the second technique I'm sharing with you today is stamping with a foam die cut. So I have the coordinating die that matches this little pumpkin from the Dynamite Halloween die set. And I am die cutting some regular kids craft foam. And I'm going to be using this craft foam to add quick color to all of these pumpkins that I've stamped on my background here. Now, keep in mind when you use a die cut, it is a little larger than the actual stamped images. It allows for that white border that we all love so much when we die cut our images. <laughs> but this color is then going to bleed outside of those stamped lines, which for me is okay. I like that wonky look in certain circumstances. So you're gonna see that I've just attached this onto my acrylic block using a little bit of tape runner adhesive and I'm using my regular inks and I'm using this like a regular stamp and pressing this onto the paper. Now, just like a regular stamp, I'm going to clean it between the colors that I'm using and kind of pat it off to dry it on the scrap paper. And then I'm gonna continue on with this Pink Fresh Studio Ballet Slipper ink. This is a very beautiful pale pink. Now to create my colorful pattern, I will also be using the Catherine Pooler It's a Girl ink, the Catherine Pooler Orange Peel ink, and the Altenew Magenta ink. And I'm just kind of stamping these randomly, trying to mix the colors throughout the pattern. I really don't have a rhyme or a reason other than I'm just trying not to put two of the same colored pumpkins next to each other. <laughs> it's not rocket science. It's a, it's a game of guessing and just going for it, in my opinion. So now I'm coming in with the Altenew Magenta ink. I absolutely love the pop of purple in this fall color palette. I think it makes it absolutely so beautiful and just gives that really warm pop that we're all kind of looking for around this time of the year without it being just like red and orange or black and orange for Halloween. So this is just kind of something a little different. Now keep in mind this 
foam has a lot of give. So I did actually over ink my stamp and get a little extra ink onto my cardstock. So just be a little ginger when you're stamping with this. I don't tend to be very light handed, but you want to be a little light handed with this stamping with foam. Now I'm going to blend some of this Catherine Pooler hot tub ink onto the top of this panel that I've created. And I'm using the Ulta New ergonomic blending brush. This is a nice big blending brush. It has that little holder that protects the bristles from getting ink all over wherever you store it. I absolutely love it and I blended some of that hot tub ink along the top of my panel to bring in that really beautiful kind of grayed out aqua color that's in the top of my inspiration picture. Now the third technique I'm sharing is by no means a new stamping technique, but if you have not tried it, you need to try it today <laughs> because once you try it, you'll be hooked and that is embossing, heat embossing more specifically. I have this sentiment from The Essentials by Ellen Line. It says, trick or treat yourself. And I'm going to emboss it onto this white panel that I've created using the essential rectangles from The Essentials by Ellen Line. So when you're embossing, and I did create a whole video on embossing for the ellenhudson.com YouTube channel. I'm going to put that up here in the corner so you can check that out. You want to make sure you're prepping your surface with a powder tool. You're going to stamp it in some good embossing ink. My preference is the Versamark ink. And then cover your stamped image with your chosen embossing powder and then heat set it. And you can see this gives me a beautiful gold shine. I really love that Brutus Monroe Gilded Embossing Powder. It just gives me great results every time. Now this I didn't actually include as one of the stamping techniques, but this is kind of a freebie and that's using a background stamp. Today I am using the Lined by Hand background stamp from My Favorite Things. This pattern, this background stamp is everything. <laughs> It's got these really thin lines, but they're hand drawn so that they're not perfect. And it's going to be a go to in my stash for sure. And I'm stamping it onto this Nina Solar White cardstock using the Catherine Pooler Twilight ink. And you can see I have placed the Nina Solar White cardstock face down onto my stamp that remains on my work surface, then covered that with a piece of scrap paper and rubbed all over the back side of that so that I could transfer all of the ink onto my cardstock. Now I've created a little grouping here with some of that lined by hand paper that I created with my background stamp, my embossed sentiment, and the spider web die cut from The Essentials by Ellen Line. I absolutely love to die cut these spider webs from Vellum. I think they are so much fun. I've attached that onto my card front using some foam adhesive. I stamped a little spider up there in the corner, added some twine and a few sparkling clear sequins. And that completes my first card today that features three stamping techniques that I think you should try today. So for my next card, I'm going to be sharing masking. This is the fourth technique that I'm sharing today. And for this, I'm going to be using the Dynamite Halloween stamp set once again, and I'm combining it with the Bear Wear 2 stamp set from the Essentials by Ellen Line. And I'm using that cauldron from the Bear Wear 2 stamp set because I love that cauldron. <laughs> And I'm positioning my little scene here onto my Nina Solar White cardstock using my Mini Misty. And the thing to keep in mind when you're masking a scene is that you want to start with the image that's going to be in the very front of the scene. So you start at the front and you work back. So my very front image is going to be this witch's hat. So I'm stamping it onto my card front here using some Gina K amalgam ink in the obsidian color. And then I'm going to pull out my Gina K masking magic paper. This is a fabulous masking paper. It has almost like a plasticky feel to it and it holds up so well. So I'll be able to use these masks over and over again. And without even re-inking my stamp, I've gone ahead and stamped it onto this masking paper. And now I'm going to use my scissors to fussy cut this image out. Now keep in mind, there are coordinating dies, but as I mentioned before, dies leave that kind of white uh, ring area around your die cut image. So when you're masking, it's actually better to go ahead and fussy cut your images so you don't have a gap between your image stamping. 
So now I'm working my way back and the next image in my scene that is behind that hat is going to be this dinosaur here. And I'm stamping him once again with that mask over the hat that I've already created. Once again in Gina K Obsidian Amalgam Ink because it is my favorite black ink, no lie. <laughs> and then once I've stamped him onto my card front, I'm going to stamp him again onto the masking paper. I haven't re-inked my stamp here. And then I'm going to fussy cut him out. I'm going to pull off the backer and place him right over the stamped image on my card front. And I'm going to be making masks for each one of these stamped images so that I can blend over the top. Now masking is a great way to create a scene on the front of your card without adding a lot of bulk. I could have die cut all of these images and achieve that layered effect, but there would have been more bulk on this card. And masking and creating these one layer cards can really be a lot of fun. So now I have my cauldron, I have my two masks in place and I'm going ahead and stamping that cauldron onto my card front. And once again, I am creating a mask using that Gina K masking magic. I'm gonna cut it out using my scissors, place it over the top, and then I'm going to use my Alta New blending brush again to add some of that Catherine Pooler hot tub ink right over the top of these images. Now, as I mentioned before, the Gina K masking magic it has a plasticky finish to it. So these masks really hold up even when you're using a lot of ink over them, they are reusable. So masking is one of those things that because you have to fussy cut the images, it can take a little bit longer. But keep in mind, if you're creating multiples of the same card, you can reuse those masks over and over again. And once I remove these, I will store these with the stamp set so that I have them for the next time that I want to use the stamp set and create some masking on my card. Now the best thing about masking is definitely pulling off the masks at the end of all of it because the scene is revealed and it is like magic. What can I say? <laughs> You're going to see that everything that I had masked off was protected from that blue ink that I blended over the top and it is absolutely perfect. It's layered up and the stamp images don't overlap so it looks great. Now through the magic of television, I've gone ahead and colored these images, simple Copic coloring, like one color Copic coloring, not even blending on these. And I've gone ahead and created a little pumpkin bucket from that Dynamite Halloween stamp set and placed that all over the top of my dinosaur using some foam adhesive. Now if I had thought about it, I could have masked that image as well and included it in my scene, but let's be honest, I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> So I'm just finishing up the card here with a few more stamped details and this fun little sentiment that says, hey, ghoul friend. <laughs> and I have stamped a card base again with that lined by hand background stamp from My Favorite Things. I used the blackjack ink for that this time. And now I'm using my Misty to help me line up the two upper left hand corners of the card front and the card base because I kind of put this on to the card base with it offset up to the upper left hand corner and using your misty is a great way to align edges when you're placing your cardstock together so keep that in mind now my final card features this happy haunting stamp set and a technique that is called kissing <laughs> don't worry it's totally safe even with the virus hanging around still so this technique works best with a solid image. So I have the solid inner part of this ghost mounted on my block. I've inked it up with the Catherine Pooler It's a Girl ink, and then I stamped it onto a clean, dry background stamp, and I used that lined by hand background stamp once again. And you're gonna see that that solid stamping now has a pattern. And because I stamped it twice, kind of rotating it, I have almost what looks like a plaid pattern on the solid area of the stamping. And I think this kissing technique is so underrated. We don't do it enough and it is so much fun and a great way to add a little bit of pattern to some solid areas of stamping. 
Now for this card, I wanted to create a window card. So I've gone ahead and taken my card base and die cut a circle from the center using the Essentials by Ellen Essential Circle Dies. And now I am taking this Boo stamp. This is from the Booyah stamp set. I absolutely love this. And I'm stamping it kind of at an angle, creating a pattern once again. Now for the first pattern that I created, I kind of started in the center of my cardstock and worked outward. When I'm using something like text, I prefer to start in one corner, whether it's the upper left corner or the bottom right corner, and kind of work my way either down or up, rather than working from the center of the card out. That's just my preference, depending on the type of images that I'm using. So you can see, I stamped that really beautiful pattern all over the front of my card. And now inside of that window, I am using some liquid glue to adhere one of the Essentials by Ellen spider web die cuts. Once again, die cut from vellum because you know it's my favorite. <laughs> now I created another sentiment using the Boo Treat die cuts from the Essentials by Ellen line and a little um, embossed area there. And I've attached my images onto the front, kind of overlapping that window. And to bring a little bit of this beautiful blue in that really solidifies this color palette, I just blended some of that ink on the inside of the card. Now I've placed a few more pumpkin images that I created using the Dynamite Halloween stamp set, bringing in some more of those colors from the color palette. And then I cut down a piece of pattern paper that I created using that lined by hand background stamp, place that along the bottom of the card and finished it off with some twine. And that finishes off my third card for today featuring five stamping techniques that I think you should try today. <laughs> I hope this really inspires you to kind of think out of the box as far as stamping techniques are concerned. Sometimes we can get in a rut, but one of these, if you try it today, can kind of mix things up and I hope it inspires you. I also hope you enjoyed this beautiful fall color palette that was inspired by Starbucks, my one true love. <laughs> and I hope that you will create something using this color palette soon. As always, I will have links to the featured supplies used in these projects in the description at YouTube, but head on over to the ellenhudson.com blog. Over there, there'll be more still shots, more information and a complete list of supplies. And you'll find that blog post linked below as well. As always, thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here on the ellenhudson.com YouTube channel so you won't miss any of our paper crafting and card making video tutorials. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.